biggest boxing event of the year takes place this Saturday night, Riyadh season, Wembley edition. Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois. And this will be my biggest live stream ever from a sold out 96,000 seat Wembley Stadium. And we will be live from six o'clock on the Pain Game YouTube channel. And you can watch all the fights like never before by clicking the link or just type thezone.com slash truejordy. And for this event, you can watch the fight and me and the lads live on the zone at the same time. Yes, that's right. When you buy the pay-per-view with thezone.com slash truejordy, you'll then be shown a logo of the pain game. You'll recognize that. Click that and you'll get our show in picture and picture with the fight on the zone. And after the fight, we will be full screen. We will be presenting you the entire event. I know it's absolutely mental. I, I can't believe it either. This is crazy. For a working class lad from Newcastle, it simply does not get bigger than this. So get over to the zone, get your pay-per-view sorted, and we will see you live from Wembley on Saturday night for Anthony Joshua versus Daniel Dubois on the pain game. Welcome back to the pain game. How are you, lads? We're here. We're at the press conference, man. Right. Bro, on. Come on. Listen, this is, this is it now. You know me, I always get excited in these ones, yeah? I've reached the fever pitch level. Because, bro, 96,000. Sold out. This is like... this. But that's is not all, Go KG. On. Oh, because you are commentating the pay-per-view. Anthony Joshua, Daniel DeBobro, can you put, like, that is there insane. really going to be an option on the zone for the pay-per-view buyers? So shout out to everyone who does buy the pay-per-view. I've got to start with this, by the way. Links in the description below. Thezone.com yep. slash True Jordy. You can watch us on a split screen with your actual fight footage. That is unreal, man. Yeah. You, you know when you say about talking about commentary and, you know, shaking things up and stuff? We're about to shake things up. The scorecard, because already me and Joey, we always tend to disagree. When, jo when I say, Joey says something, and I say, I'm going to go the opposite. So you're probably going to, that's going to happen. You're I'm gonna excited. I'm excited. Obviously, it's AJ versus Dubois. We've just watched the press conference. We're going to do a little review now. Daniel Dubois, the big rumors, the big news, is all about his coach not being around yep. this week. Fight week is one of the most important weeks of training camp, right? That's the point where you need your coach in your ear, settle the nerves, keep you focused on your game. And yet, some rumors are saying there's been a fallout between the dad and Don Charles. We see in, last, uh, in the last fight, Don Charles was kind of ushered um, out of the way for the dad to be shouting the instructions. Mm -hmm. And now, potentially, Don Charles might be sick or there might be something else going He's on. not sick. Something's wrong. Something is... Fight week, regardless of how sick you are, you'll take a Lemsip, a Paracetamol. This is probably the biggest payday of his career and he's in bed whilst his fighter is up there by himself. That's nonsense. Something isn't right. Dubois didn't even seem confident when he was explaining the reasons. He's just like, yeah, as long as he's there all night, I'm cool. That's not, nah, that's nonsense. I'm not buying it. It's no a, way. It's a difficult one because at the end of the day, he needs to be 110%, you know what I mean? So he doesn't want to get ill. But at the same time, you know, this is the biggest opportunity that he's he ever had. The hardest had. fight of his life. 96,000 people, but, you know what I mean? And he's the type of guy, we know he's a man of few words. He need, he's like a bit of a robot, let's, let's be honest, you know what I mean? He needs someone who's going to guide him. He needs his coach there. So to me, there's something not right. But look at it like this, right? His dad has been involved in all of his camps in an overbearing kind of way. Yep. There's like an, a, a bit of an over-reliance with Dubois and his dad. The dad at some point is going to feel like I should be in this corner. I should be the main voice. So I feel like there's some type of issues going on right now. And I think we might not see Don Charles well, again. We've heard about this in the family before. Am I right in thinking that Caroline, the sister? The sister Caroline yeah. Dubois. That's the, that's the story right now. So you, Caroline Dubois, and I know she changed trainer, but then their relationship is quite strange. We haven't heard them. We, yeah. I don't even see him at her fights. I, I did, you don't see them together. Mm -hmm. You see the family, you see the kid, you see the siblings, yeah. but you don't see him in attendance. And that's, that's something for me. But there's Go also... Ahead. So uh, a history of this sort of thing happening with Don Charles and fights yes. that have high profile fights like you look at Hay against Chisora yep, yep. I remember I think it was supposed to be one of Chisora's last sparring sessions there was apparently a massive row in the gym between himself and Don Charles and right up until I think it was maybe the press conference we didn't know whether Don Charles who had been in Chisora's corner for all the years before would actually be there but the be all and end all much like Daniel Dubois said is it's whether he's there on the night and whether in my opinion 
he's able to be willing to let Daniel Dubois' father be a real voice in that corner. Well, do you know what I will say on this one, though? Because when you really look at the relationships that these guys have had, I remember in Riyadh, I was going for a walk, as I do, and I just saw them in a, in a, like in a coffee shop. And it, this was before the this was before the dispresser. Yep. And what you saw is Don Charles was just talking to him. And if you've listened to um, if you've listened to Dubois recently, he he will soak up the information yep. and he'll repeat what he hears. He started like, talking about it being spiritual, about being man talking about manifestation, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. Did you notice today? None of that was there because yeah. it's not recent information. <laughs> they have to take not not even taking a piss, but move on. he just move on. Let's go. But, uh, by the way. To say his performance in this press conference was off would be an understatement. Like, he didn't want to talk at all. No. Like, he, and he, when he did talk, he was really stumbling, he was nervous. What do we make of that? Because he, I know he's not the best talker anyway, yeah. but it was particularly shaky. I think he felt on the spot, especially the way Ade started. Like, for me, I was like, oh, bloody hell, straight to it. He's like, we're just going to address these rumors straight out it. the gate. Dubois was just like a deer in the headlights. Like, oh, uh, yeah. So for me, I'm like, I, put, I don't put too much stock into his dodgy answers because sometimes he's like that. But there's definitely something wrong in the camp. No, but then, Trev, this is where I have to disagree with you on this one because while he says is, is a bit different, the funny thing is they've had to deal with, well, Spencer. Spencer Theron's come out oh. and said, like, he's yeah. littered. He's littered. He's lit a bum. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Literally. Yeah. Can and you explain that? So he's come out and said, basically, he's ba he's blamed the dad. He's blamed um, Dubois' dad. Mm. Said Dubois' dad's done a, done a madness, kind of almost shafted. Yeah. Get onto the words of shafted Don Charles. Now, if you're going into the biggest fight of your, if you're going to the biggest fight of your life you don't need this kind of stuff echoing well all I want to do is focus on the biggest test which yeah. is Anthony Joshua this has come out and we have is this eerily similar to kind of the way John Fury went on the week Absolutely. before Alexander Usyk fight right yeah, yeah. when it's Absolutely. big pressure the cracks start to show lads I'm not saying that that's what's happening but it could be I do want to move on to the spa the Let's spa go. was brought up we've all heard about it Daniel Dubois cracked AJ all those years ago yeah. and again AJ all smiles when this is brought up strangely considering the rumors are he got the worst of it yep. and again Daniel Dubois did not want to talk about it what do we what do we make of that I, I think, think that the spa oh, itself yeah. is <laughs> literally as a, as a fighter. fighter what I would say is the spa <laughs> is literally as Anthony Fowler's described it in my opinion now AJ made no secret of the fact that they've done hundreds of rounds nearly together and he mentioned that there but my main takeaway from the whole story around the sparring is that Daniel Dubois has gone along with the narrative in the past that he knocked Anthony Joshua out in sparring. I think that now that we've seen these two in the same room and doing build up together, it's quite apparent that that didn't happen. Yeah. Right? So Daniel Dubois is probably in a position where he knows he sort of agreed to saying it did happen. He knows it didn't really, but it's not completely made up because there is weight to the argument. I think that Anthony Joshua is going to be way more comfortable being the one facing up to it and speaking about the spar because he feels that he's got the upper hand where he knows that Dubois agreed to knocking yeah. him out earlier on when they spoke well, about also it. Also, was that thing of someone like speaking about a specific moment in a specific spa and are you saying, but we sparred a hundred rounds though. Yeah. You know you didn't do sh anything yeah, of yeah. significance in the other 99. It, so for me, I'm like, the, that's yeah, why Listen, I, I was on GB with Anthony Joshua. I've watched hundreds of rounds of sparring. I've seen Daniel DeBoer spar and he sparred one of my mates, Warren Baster. When you've got a, when you're at the heavyweight division, people get hurt. It's it's not uncommon yeah. for someone to get shook, get yeah. dropped. It happens. You know, it's all about fight night. So I don't take nothing away that he that he got hurt, and I know fine well that AJ's you know probably been hurt many times in his career. Yeah. But he shakes it off and he turns up and he performs on fight night. So sparring means nothing. What do we make of AJ's demeanor at night? Very calm, confident, quite um, seem quite positive about everything. Well, you know what? He's locked in. It's almost cerebral. How yeah. he's looking at this guy he's basically said even that line when he says if you give them an inch they'll take you an inch they'll take a mile he wants to let him know I'm not giving you no space here wherever he, if you want to go somewhere I'm letting you know even when the boss spoke he's like well I was talking and then after he reminds him and he's like now it's your turn so he's almost has to little bro him at every single moment because the last thing he needs let's still have it right it's a heavyweight fire against a heavyweight he don't need Dubois getting any belief in there and also it's that thing of he's experienced the Ruiz surprise defeat right where you underestimate a guy he's made a point to say over like many times I've respected Dubois with how I've prepared in my camp 
he is not playing around with Dubois. He's treating him as if he's the best guy he's ever been against. So for me, I'm like, if I'm Dubois in that camp, I'd be concerned by the fact that this guy's so calm and the fact he's been so respectful because he's taking you as seriously as he's taking anybody else. For me, uh, the, there was a mention of Eddie Hearn saying the three-time heavyweight champion of the world. Obviously, yeah. there's some discrepancy there of the fact that it was taken off Alexander Usyk, it wasn't won. But still, if AJ does that, where does that put his legacy now as a fighter, three time with some of those elites? Or, or do you think he has to go out there and still beat a Usyk or a Fury to put he's himself there? He's definitely got to legitimise it. Same way Dubois feels like he's got to legitimise being the champ that now. That's the key. He's absolutely yeah, got to go and get a win over one of those two guys. Like, when we look back and it's numbers on paper, we'll say, flip me, three time. But we won't put him near Lennox and we won't, you see what I'm trying to say? So he's got to go and make it. It's, it's how he it. wins as well. I don't think it's just a case of going winning. And he needs to go and make a statement and then like you say he's got to then go and legitimize it so for me you know it's but there's a lot of jeopardy the though we one thing we do have to remember in this one the jeopardy is there the last time we saw AJ properly in the UK was um, to, at the Spurs arena against Usyk and we all came out for that one and again we all went home sad now this we've we times this even more still in north still in still in this area but let's have it right now you're talking about 96,000 everyone is really here for you and you don't want it to end in this bad if, if we're all here and we witness AJ lose mm. bloody hell I, I don't the, you I, the, you can't come back from this one it's personally so this is why you think that this is it this is Make it because this is this is just one of those you know there's moments in time we always remember that Klitschko one that's a moment in time with 96,000 in front in Wembley mm -hmm. with the whole world watching and the, and the young lion that's coming to take what's yours and you carried boxing you've been the face of boxing for a long time you put a lot of food you put a lot of money into people's yeah. into people's pockets Kids, yep. It can't end like this. You must win this one. When you say about it being make or break as well, I think this pretty much sums up that point, right? If Anthony Joshua loses against Daniel Dubois, I think that's the Anthony Joshua against Tyson Fury match out of the window now. Forever. We've already heard that if Tyson Fury loses against Usyk, still up for that one. So that goes to show the difference. If Tyson Fury gets beat by Usyk in that fight, they're still very much happy to make Anthony Joshua against Absolutely. Tyson Fury. So Fury can lose and still go into that fight. I don't know if the tables are reversed and the roles are flipped. I don't know whether we could say the same. I don't know whether Anthony Joshua could take a defeat to Daniel Dubois and the British public and Riyadh season still be as interested in putting on that Fury against part, Joshua Part of the reason next. for me is, is because AJ, if he does lose this fight, the way he's likely to lose is a finish I don't I don't see uh, Dubois winning a decision against AJ it's it good to be here. and if you get finished you've already had a rebuild how many rebuilds can one boxing career handle right you you, you can't keep coming back like that as mm. a new fighter I think this is it for him we need a, cl a clean sweep on a, on a night like this again you have to you just have to remember the magnitude right and on a night like this it has to go your way because mm. you're talking about legacy they keep mentioning this free time champion and that's really more an Eddie Hearn thing because as yeah. a promoter I get to say free time I take more of the purse when we yeah. talk about because he's thinking about Fury at the end of the day when they do fight Fury and if let's say let's say Usyk still wins that one AJ is the A side mm. when we're at the table the negotiations have to say well this is a free time champion so I think it's more on that stage but when you talk about legacy he has to go and beat Fury has to go and beat Usyk and be undisputed Let's talk about the undercard, lads, because I really enjoyed some of the little uh, spicy words oh, that we had going back and forth. Buatzi versus Hutchinson, in particular, you can see Hutchinson is just kneeling into oh. him, winding him up. What did you make of that one? I love the, the blend of those two personalities. Yeah. And I hate, like, I want Buatzi to win this fight badly. I hate the way that Hutchinson treated Craig Richards in the last fight. And, you know, Treat as him. a South Londoner. <laughs> you, you mean know, you beat him up? <laughs> yeah. He beat, he beat as he was supposed to, he beat as a boxer. Band. And now we We've got Watsi, another South London rep representative. He's got to go and make that right. So yeah. for me, how I'm confident are you though? Because Willie showed a lot in that fight, mate. I, I really do rate Willie Hutchison as a boxer, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I just know that I want Watsi to get it done. But yeah, it's going to be. Uh, I think I'm the only one picking Willie. I think all you for are favouring Watsi, right? I'm, I'm leaning towards Watsi, uh, yeah. but I'm only just about leaning. It's a very hot. Listen, if they gave gold medals for shit houseery, Willie Hutchison to be an Olympian, oh, wouldn't he? Like, they literally. Bro. I don't think there's anyone that could box that man and avoid him getting under their skin. Mm, Even yeah, little yeah. things. Boatsy hadn't even 
hadn't said a word and he going look at him he's an emotional wreck yeah. <laughs> I've just, just been thinking like where's that come from but listen doctor. but listen do you know what it takes me back to like high school yeah sometimes it's the stupid simplistic yeah. things that yeah. work yeah. and this man has got a, a knack of getting under opponent's skins yeah. will it be enough combined with the boxing experience and the technique we've seen he's clearly got to be able to go I think we'd all agree a level or two higher than Craig Spider Richards. Can it translate? That's the main question I have. I, I've, never, I've never ever seen Boati like that. So I think, you know, this him in the face of how rattled he was. He's rattled. Oh, he's, no. he's an emotional Literally, wreck. He's an emotional wreck. It's what it is. It's, it's actually true. Rattled. I've never seen him grab someone. Did you see the face off? I've never witnessed him in that behavior. So coming to the fight night, that's exactly where Hutchinson wants him. He wants him very Absolutely. emotional. I, I, no, so I, I, I really think it's going to play a massive part because I think he's lost his head. He's you're losing your head now, I'm losing my head because I, dis I disagree totally. What do you disagree on? So this is the thing with Boatsy, right? Boatsy is one of those guys, you know when they say to him, you need to be yourself. Everyone keeps calling him out saying, be yourself, be yourself. Boatsy in the ring is nasty. Yep. There's no nice side of him. And people want to see that version of Boatsy outside of the ring, but he's not that. And what's, what's happened now is he has enough anger. He doesn't want to dissipate his anger. You saw in the face off, he can't wait to get his hands on this guy. Yeah, he's he, already he always he's that wound anger, up. That, that anger when, yeah, when, he, I, I when, he, when he got in the ring, he was always guys. like, it reminds me a little bit of when AJ, you know, everyone was said, oh, be yourself. It's the same situation. You had a respectful guy where people was like, no, this isn't the really who you are. And you know, when people say it enough, it starts to but get then, you know, your head. To, to come back to that one. And it's so funny because you see the shadows of these two characters. Yeah. You've got um, Willie Hutchinson, who feels like he's come from the school of, of Fury. Tyson Fury. Yep. And he's doing Tyson Fury type things. He's but doing then well. Watsi has come from the school of AJ, where I do my talking in the ring. But I think he's even more venomous. That he could be more venomous in the ring than AJ well, Here's times. the problem, right? We've got outdated data on Watsi, and we keep referring to it by saying how spiteful he is and how venomous he is. The last few fights, from Boatsy under Virgil Hunter, mm -hmm. he hasn't been as venomous as he's used to be in. Yeah. Right now, he's a bit more technical, a bit more patient. I don't know that that's going to be beneficial in there with Willie Hutchinson. If I'm Willie Hutchinson, and, and he, look, I'm looking at his skill set, he's a mover, he's a good counter puncher, he's a switch hitter, he's a bit tricky. He makes you miss, he makes you pay. I want an aggravated, angry, kind of flat-footed Boatsy. The way Boatsy right. doesn't move a lot, up. and I think that he's going to be in and out and causing he problems, and that stress is going to be cranked up with each round that he loses, because I think Willie will bag a lot of rounds fairly early on. Mm. He, he is like a mini Tyson Fury. He, but he reminds us a lot of him. But then at the same time, remember, Willie did lose a fight. He got dropped by, um, what's that it, Lennox? Lennox uh, Clark. Yeah. Clark. And I'm telling you now, Boatsy hits harder than that guy. I yeah, guarantee. Yeah. guarantee. Real, I think there was real. a weird Garrett. issue there. He's moved up and I'm telling you, know, I think Boatsy he was drained at the wind. a heavy handed, heavy handed, light heavy. So and that's what you're going to get is, you're going to get that. And that's where Craig didn't capitalize because there's times where he hurt Willie and he didn't yeah. really go for it. He's yeah. got a laid back personality that translates in the ring. Boatsy, if he hurts you, it could be over. Let's move on to uh, Danny versus Shiraz, the core main event. Yep. Shiraz really does look like the next big thing. However, Danny has a track record of upsetting the odds and really is coming into this with a lot of self-belief. It is a uh, like a Cinderella man story of like, oh, I barely knew who this guy was, wins the fight, and then he's into the core main at Wembley. It's yeah. an amazing story, but the task in front of him in Shiraz is a high order. The task is huge. Yeah. Did you see them when they're doing the face-off, the size difference? Yeah. He looks like a light heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, think, I think he's just such a, you know, composed fighter. Have you seen his jab? His jab knocks people down, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. As much as I want to kind of say Danny has a good chance, I just can't see it. I can't see a way that he can that's beat right. him. I just think he's too big, too strong. And he said that's that's what they said earlier on. He's too big, too strong, hits too hard. And to be honest, I think that's all it takes. I think he might be His right. And also, yeah, even ahead. the names of people that he's beat. So it's Troy Williamson. I think Felix Cash is on there. Yep. These ain't guys who are at Hamza Shiraz's level. So I'm looking at something that I don't Troy, have much. Troy Williams was a good what? amateur, and Fe so and so was um, what Felix was the other guy? Cash. Sorry, what? Felix Cash. Felix both Cash good is amateurs. funny when you when you said about not being able to see a world where he beat Sam Shiraz. I didn't. I wasn't able to see a world where Denny beat Felix Cash a couple of months ago. I thought that that was a massive, massive uh, uphill Ka battle that Felix he had Cash against Felix after him. the Denzel Bentley fight mm. hasn't really gone back to that level of performance. So whilst that name is good, there's a bit more still 
pieces on that bread. If we were looking at records though, right, and we're looking at Hamza Shiraz right now, if he didn't have the backing of Riyadh season, right, and if he wasn't already becoming in his own right a, a, a household name, he looks like he's going to go on to be in British boxing, right? I do think that we'd be looking at this as a fight of a guy who's had, what, 18, 19 fights, something like that, and we'd be thinking, this is a real tough test. It's a real stunt. I would it's agree nearly with you. as close it's to only, 50, But you have 50. to go back to the Ammo Williams. That's what I was, I was about to say. When you think of Ammo, and Ammo was like, Ammo can probably do more than Denny can, yep. no disrespect to him, and Ammo struggled because we knew, even when we were talking about that fight, when we when was out there, we were saying, well, how does he get around him? How does mm -hmm. he get inside? And Ammo is tricky. He moves a lot. He's <sighs> probably got a bit more power. Denny, in my head, he's got problems. People don't want to sign a fight and fight Hamza Charest. No. There's, they're, they're giving him names and no one wants to take that fight. Why? Because, again, risk and reward and you, he's just going to be another one added to the legacy. Yeah. This guy's going that way yeah. and he just happens to be in the way. I'm sorry. Yeah, there was talk about uh, Eubank. Uh, Eubank Jr. Yeah, he's Eubank, like, fuck that. Eubank no, is, I, for me personally, I'll just say, I don't see Eubank wanting to sign that contract no at no way. all. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll wrap it up there. Don't forget, we are live from Wembley from 6 o'clock. Wow. You can watch it on the Paying Game YouTube channel. You can also watch us on The Zone with your pay-per-view. You can switch to the Paying Game commentary. <laughs> Please do it. I really appreciate everyone who does. The link for the pay-per-view is in the description below. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to the Paying Game YouTube channel, and we'll see you on Saturday night. Come Let's on, man. <laughs>